In this movie, we will talk about uh, the basic intuition behind random forest uh, algorithm for classification specifically, and we'll also see an implementation of this in Jump Pro. Now, why random forests? We have seen previously that single classification trees are often quite powerful rule-based methods of categorizing or classifying our data. And if we let the tree grow, it can do a pretty good job of correctly classifying our training set. However, due to the nature in which the trees are built, there are some drawbacks to the single classification trees. First of all, the classification trees are highly sensitive and they're hungry uh, to use the variables that have a lot of values for the initial split. For a continuous variable, this could be a variable which has a high variance. And for a categorical variable, it could be a variable which has um, a lot of qualitative levels built in. These trees are also highly sensitive to the initial splits or the variables chosen for the initial split. And often when we run these trees again, the same variable may keep getting chosen uh, for the initial split. Because trees can grow and grow uh, into a fairly large tree, they can tend to overfit the data. That is, they will do very well on the training set, but they may not do as well when new data is brought into uh, the model for classification. Now, pruning those trees can be a way to avoid this overfitting. However, due to these above reasons, classification trees can have low predictive power. And the next step in progression of classification was to use the wisdom of the crowds or ensemble sort of methods. Random forests are a set of ensemble methods where the intuition is to build several trees, let them fully grow, but choose specific variables at each split, and then pool or combine these trees to classify an outcome uh, into one of the categories that it belongs. Uh, to look at the algorithm of the random forest, uh, the first step in the process is to decide how many trees to build. Let's call that B. For each tree that we want to build, we draw a bootstrapped sample of the data. Bootstrapping means that we are drawing a sample from the data set with replacement so that the number of observations match up to the number of uh, items in the data set, but some of them will be repeated. So we are randomly drawing these uh, samples. Then once we have drawn B bootstrap samples, for each sample, sample that we choose, we built a single tree and we let it grow. However, the way tree is built is a little different than the traditional classification trees. For each tree, at each split, we choose a certain number of predictor variables. So let's call that k, where k is less than the total number of predictor variables that we have. Of these k, we will choose the best predictor for that split, and the split happens on that predictor. But then the cycle again repeats for the next split. Again, a random set of k predictors are chosen for that second split. And again, from those, the best predictor is chosen to split the data. And this process keeps continuing till a predefined stopping rule is met. Now, once this tree is built, we will repeat steps three to seven for all of our B bootstrap samples. And then once we have built these B trees, each record is classified based on the majority vote that the trees assigned to it. Random forests are a really powerful uh, algorithm for classifying records. They are computationally more efficient than some other on some of the methods like bagging. Uh, in random forest, there are really two user-defined uh, parameters. One is how many predictors to choose for a split and how many trees to build. Now, instead of predefining these, we can also choose the optimal number of predictors and number of trees on a grid search. And the algorithm will then give us the optimal number of predictors and the optimal number of trees that were used um, to build a certain model. Let us now see how to implement a random forest model in Jump Pro. Now, Jump calls random forest bootstrapped forest because random forest is a trademark name. So here we have a data set on a bank 
where our outcome variable is whether a customer will take personal loan. So we have yes or no binary variable here. And we are trying to understand or predict our outcome variable as a function of these other uh, independent variables. And we also have a training and validation column, which is partition.data. So our model will be built in training and then in terms of the optimal choice of the number of trees, et cetera, the results will be compared uh, to the validation set. To fit a random forest, or uh, as Jump calls it, bootstrap forest, we go to analyze, predictive modeling, and then bootstrapped forest. Here, we can uh, move our dependent variable to Y. We move our independent variables to X. And then we can move our validation column to validation. And the default method is bootstrap forest. We also have the option of boosted trees uh, and then other algorithms, but we'll keep it as bootstrapped forest. Click OK. These are the default um, arguments presented to us. We have 5,000 rows of data. We have 11 terms or 11 potential predictors. The default is to have 100 terms. We can um, try that at 200, 300, and then stop when our accuracy plateaus out. On the validation set, uh, here we can decide how many terms a priori to sample for each split. Then bootstrap sample rate means that we will generate a new sample with replacement to the size of our original data set, which is 5,000 in this case. Uh, and then the next two options control how many splits to have, that at least 10, and then at the most 2,000, otherwise the tree can get very unwieldy. And then uh, the split's gonna happen if an observation or, or a node has more than five uh, records. If we choose the multiple fit option, then it is going to give us uh, an array of number of predictors chosen for a split. If we had a tuning table, we could have chosen this option. If we want to replicate our results, uh, we can set the seed. So let's say we set the seed to 9876. We click OK. So we have our output here. Um, among the various candidates, the model did choose nine terms to be considered for a split. Again, um, that what that means is that at each split, and at each split, nine of the eleven predictors are randomly chosen. Among those, then the best predictor to be split is evaluated, and split happens at that predictor. Again, at the next split, again the process gets repeated, and this will happen throughout the duration of the growth of the tree. And uh, if we want to look at how well our model did against the validation set, we can look at the ROC curve and we see that the accuracy is 0.99. So our model did an excellent job of classifying a record uh, as whether they'll accept or not accept uh, our personal loan. Now, how would you score new data? So for that, we can, um, go to our little red triangle and then click on save columns and we can save prediction formula so this will add the formula to the table so here we see that we have the probability of yes and no for each record and suppose i had a new record uh, let's say we'll just pick these two observations. Ideally, you would have a new data to score. We'll just select our variables all the way till credit card. I'm going to copy it. Now, pretend that we have new data that we are bringing in. Uh, once we have the new data set to score, we can just simply paste that data set here. And the model will based on random forest, predict the outcome. Of these, 
So we see that for the first record, they're predicted to not accept loan. The second record will accept loan. Uh, and then the third record will not accept a loan. So this is how we would score new data using random forest. We would save the prediction formula and then we can just copy and paste the new records that we have and the model will classify them as a yes or a no.